everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm here with another compliance tip of the week. Today we're talking about NIST SP800171 Control 3.4.8, Apply Deny by Exception Blacklisting Policy to Prevent the Use of Unauthorized Software, or Deny All Permit by Exception Whitelisting Policy to Allow the Execution of Unauthorized Software. Uh, so if you're wondering what blacklisting and whitelisting are, let's start there. That's a, that's a great place to start. Uh, blacklisting is when you have a list of uh, you know, programs or ports or services that are not allowed to run. They go onto a blacklist, typically with a firewall, antivirus, or some sort of endpoint management solution. Uh, and ultimately, there's a rule saying, hey, if this tries to run or if this tra type of traffic tries to come through, uh, it's blacklisted, don't let it through. Whitelisting, on the other hand, is exactly the opposite. Permit by exception means if it's on the whitelist, it can function, you know, whether it's traffic coming through or a program executing. But if it's not on the list, 100% denial. So again, that's really the big difference between blacklisting and whitelisting. Fortunately, they give us a choice about what it is uh, you know, that they are allowing us to execute. And in this particular case, uh, this control is talking about software. And there's some other controls that talk about other things other than software, like ports and protocols and whatnot. This control is specific about unauthorized software. Uh, and so we need something that is going to help us to be able to either uh, block or allow software. So lots and lots of ways to do that. Uh, if I was to give a sample answer, we'll just use group policy as our methodology of solving it. We'd say, hey, look, uh, this is implemented via group policy. The solution disallows the installation of privileged applications without the authorization of an authorized administrator. In other words, we have a group policy that's locked down so that you can't install anything unless you're an IT administrator, essentially uh, you know, making a whitelist only uh, environment where only things that have been allowed by IT administrators and installed by them via you know uh, group policy or an administrative escalation to install are allowed. Uh, rest of the answer is in addition, group policy restricts many behaviors, including the use of unauthorized software based on organizational unit membership. So again, in Active Directory, maybe you're organizing by organizational unit. These members can have this application set. Maybe this uh, organizational unit over here can have uh, a couple of extra programs. So we just put out the example of use use of unauth of authorized software based on organizational unit membership and permission levels. Examples include shop floor personnel and computers, which are completely locked down to only whitelisted applications and are unable to perform any other functions. So again, you can use group policy to really lock down what that computer can do, uh, assuming the member that logged in is a part of that locked down organizational unit. So again, through group policy, no extra real cost there if you've already got a typical Windows domain-based network. Now, if you have none of that, if you're a, a five-person company and you've got no server, all right, how do you solve for this control? Well, there's a couple of different ways. One is if you're if you're a one, let's say you're really, really small, right? Let's say you're a one person or a two person. All right, we say apply, deny by exception blacklisting policy to prevent the use of unauthorized software. Well, what we could say is, hey, look, we got an antivirus program on here and the antivirus program is there to prevent uh, any kind of malicious software from executing. But look, I'm an administrator, right? So I obviously administrate, you know, the one and only computer in the business, or maybe there's two computers in the business and both people are administrators because uh, they both perform, you know, whatever tasks are, are necessary that would include installing software, right? Not, not very untypical of a very small defense contractor. So in this case, we would just simply say, hey, look, you know what? The policy is in place. Maybe it would be a written policy that just says don't install bad stuff or only permit good stuff. Uh, and that might be part of your IT use and cybersecurity policy. Um, so, hey, if, if you're trying to get compliant with this DFARS NIST SP800171 or you're getting ready for CMMC certification on your own and you're looking for help, uh, our compliance experts are always on call for you, and we can definitely help walk you through this control and all the others. Visit NIST800171Compliance.com or check out the bio below for links to make life easy. There you can find more information about how we can help self-schedule time of your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website or learn more about our completely done-for-you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. It doesn't have to be that hard. Let us help you with it. So if you love the content we're putting out here, uh, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button. It really makes a difference. Or even better, smash that subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMMC certification everybody's going to have to go through eventually. Until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. See you in the next one, and I sure hope my editor caught that.